Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how you can have objects spawn when a scene is created inside of Unity. So rather than having your game objects already set up in the scene, like over here, you can hit the play button, and when your scene loads, objects will spawn immediately, like this tree did when the scene loads. So the idea is over in code, you want to hook into the scene manager, scene loaded event. Um, so the scene manager always exists inside of Unity and you can add a delegate method by calling this. So delegate and then the name of your method to run whenever the scene is loaded. So if you're using a normal mono behavior, your method for adding this in might be more something like on awake or on start. Um, currently I'm using yeah, singleton and the idea behind the singletons is that they will always load with the scene. Um, not really the focus of this video though, of course. So anyway, just when the scene starts, make sure that you hook into that scene loaded event. And then for a method, basically you want to take a prefab, um, some raw data, and one way or another you want to instantiate your game objects onto the scene. If you're using the new ECS system, it would be more like creating entities out of prototypes, but the idea is pretty similar either way. Uh, so for the time being anyway, until that ECS system is more fleshed out, you can do game object instantiate to create any game object on demand. So with these scene loadout and scene object classes, I'm uh, trying to create a scriptable object um, method of basically storing all the data that a scene should initially load with. So basically the default values for all the game objects that are going to load in the scene. But the important thing you really need here is the prefab, the spawn position, and the spawn rotation. So if we go take a look at my scene object, which is a scriptable object, scriptable objects basically, um, you can create them in the editor and you can store that data permanently without having things change in the inspector wildly. So scriptable objects are pretty nice because uh, you can kind of just store the data to a file rather than needing to have like an object in your game scene all the time to hold that data. But here it's just really simple at the moment. Spawn position, spawn rotation, and prefab. So the prefabs, obviously, if you haven't worked with those inside of Unity, when you take a uh, object from your game scene and you drag that into your project folder, it'll create a little file, which is kind of just a copy of all of that data. So you can see here like the prefab for the game control. If I was to drop this into the scene, it would have all of this stuff associated with it. So if you instantiate a prefab, it's going to be creating a copy of that into the scene with all of the same data. And then the reason you might want to have a custom spawn position and spawn rotation is that you might not want that object to appear on the scene with exactly that position or exactly that rotation. So by uh, having it instantiate with a custom spawn position and spawn rotation, you can have some custom settings for that object. Now you don't have to stop there at spawn position and spawn rotation. You could also do something like uh, let's see, game object object. Um, no, that's bad because uh, that's that variable name's already been used. And then you could do game object .get component if you really wanted to, and then get any of the components that should exist on that prefab, um, and then to change the values on that as you instantiate the game object. So I don't know if you needed to set something to full HP, you could get component health, and then do like set health 50 or whatever. But anyway, the simple idea to take away from this video is that you should hook into the scene loaded event. And then if the scene matches your data where you have a list of objects you want to create, then you should go ahead and instantiate those game objects onto the scene. Uh, so I guess I'll show one more thing in the scene loadout. I will have different scene loadouts for different scenes. So you can see here a scene name. And that's how you basically check to see if the active scene dot name is equal to that. And if so, you load all the objects for that scene. Basically, the loadout is scene specific. Uh, you could also do this with save files. So if you have a save load system, you might be saving some data like which enemies still exist inside of your game world, which ones have been destroyed. And so that when you load the game, uh, you could load all of that data here and then basically you get like current save load data and then you would spawn the objects which should still exist onto the scene when the scene loads. Uh, but 
having that kind of save load functionality is a bit more complicated than what we're talking about right here. So just focus on instantiating your game objects when the scene loads. So basically when the scene loads, you call your delegate method to spawn the objects and then you spawn the objects. And so that's how you can have it where you hit the play button, your scene loads, and then the objects in your scene are going to spawn. Kind of like so. Now, I do think that having a save load system here in order to save the locations and load the locations of all of your game objects as your character, your player goes through the scenes, changes things in the game, triggers certain events would be really useful to have. So I will try to cover that in the future as well once I've created it for myself. But yeah, for now, that's going to be all for this video. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my future Unity content.